you are a B2B service-based business owner and you are looking to gain more clients, create more impact and more revenue in your business, tune in to Amplify Your Marketing Message with Christine campbell Rappin. Every week, we're going to take you through how to build an audience of buyers, mastering your marketing message, and making offers that convert consistently. We'll see you all on the inside. So welcome back. I am on fire today talking about my favorite piece of contribution as a business owner, and that is strategy. And you, my friends, need to drop what you're doing. If you are playing simply to participate in your business instead of playing to win. Because today I'm going to show you the path to win, not just once, but repeatedly. And it isn't planning, my friends. My dad always says to me, planning precedes performance. And that is true. But if you don't know where the starting block is and you don't know where you're going, you can plan yourself right into the spin cycle. And I'm watching you, my friends. I'm watching you spin because all you're doing is planning. Planning planning. And I want you off that crazy train. I am all about execution. And you know that if you're a fan of this podcast, I am your host, Christine Campbell Rappin, and I am a mentor who help people create a business that is about sustainability without working 24 seven, high growth, because you know where your next client is coming from. And your strategy plays an integral role in creating stability. And yet, many of you don't understand what strategy is all about. And how do I know that? Because every time I'm talking to a marketing peer, whether they're specialists in web design, SEO, branding, graphics, lots of my peers, they all say to me, I'm so glad I met you because if I could send my clients to you first, we would see more results on the other side. And you're getting a free masterclass right now in this episode because I want to talk about strategy. Strategy is what I live and breathe. I am a thinking partner primarily for creatives and professional consultants who are selling an intangible service that is worth a lot of money because it creates big value to the buyer. And yet, the reason I get retained by I'm the must hire for my clients and for people who I've yet to meet is because we build the strategy. So strategy is not about just participating, which is what the planning is all about, is participation. Everybody wants a budget, everybody wants to have their empire built, and nobody really wants to give, but they all wanna take. Planning has its place, but don't get caught by the oxymoron, which is strategic planning, because in strategic planning, it is not strategy at all. Strategy is about the integrative choices that lead your decision making. It is not about perfection. It is very uncertain by its very nature. And it is the difference of whether you make it or don't as a business owner. So don't skip it. I always think that strategy is about choice. And particularly four choices that you're making. And you need to be able to answer all four of these questions. And not just answer them once and put this on a shelf or on a post-it note. I actually think you pull these four questions into a one-page document. And every time you're making big decisions about resource, bandwidth, or people, you're evaluating the options against this guiding light, this strategy that we all agreed to. First question simple one. What field are we choosing to compete on? That can be a vertical, a geographic area, but a specific place where we're going to go look for being able to identify and attract our buyers or customers. And I will tell you that the world should not be this specific playing field you start from, especially if you're a small business. The more specific your market, the better. And that isn't easy always to find the market because you've got to find a market who will pay for you. 
not just a market who's entertained by you. Don't get caught as the likable expert. I want to make you the must hire and the strategy is a key piece of that. But you need to define the playing field on which you want to play. Second question to this is why are you choosing that market and how will you play on it? That's your go-to-market strategy. That's the programs and services that you choose that you hope will attract on that specific field people with money to pay for your programs and services. And here's a key piece of strategy where I think often I can tell you don't have one, is if you have multiple service offerings, are they about a cohesive result? Because they should be. If you wanna win in the marketplace, people need to know who are you and what do you stand for? Having products and services that don't connect confuses the market. And we all know, You've heard it before, a confused buyer will move past you to the next business that does exactly what you do and chooses to invest with them if it's clearer. So you've got to get clearer on having an umbrella. This is what we stand for. And I tell you, that's a really elegantly simple question. And it is one that you probably answer off the top of your head in a nanosecond. And it sounds like crap and you sound like everybody else. And I don't even know what it means. I might feel a little uncomfortable, but that's true. And it's an invitation to do something different. Elegant simplicity in its question. Spend time to figure out the answer because the marketplace is your choice. How you show up in it is your choice. And if you're showing up with multiple services and offerings, they should all lead to the same destination, which is the same result that your buyer is seeking. What's different is the level of support. What's different is the time frame to get to that result. But it's not a different unicorn. It is a different support plan. And different support plans are a good idea as long as you're supporting one result. Because one result is clear. One result, I understand the choices as a buyer. And it will move you more predictably to the yes. So let's just recap because this is so critical and so needed and I hope you're making notes and then gonna sit with these questions to answer them. Number one, What marketplace are you choosing? What specific segment will you play on? The field of play, define it. Number two, how are you going to play on that field? Third question, what makes us different than the competitive landscape? What is the identity that separates us as the must hire to somebody shopping, searching, questing. You've got to own why you're the must hire. Otherwise, you're just like everybody else. And you don't need to be massively different than the marketplace to dominate the marketplace. 1% different is what it takes. So what's your 1%? What's the thing that you stand on, your values, your whole entity, your essence? And does it show up at all the touch points? often that can be incongruent. And what I mean by that is there are some warts and some inconsistency, and anytime you have them, you have a trust break with your potential buyer. And the trust break, if it's significant or it's more than one, could leave them shopping with somebody else. So you need to get clear. What's the value system you have? What do we stand for? And why are we the right hire for that specific buyer on that specific playing field? And we're going to deliver the results in this way. And that's what they want. Which means, yeah, you're going to have to research. You have to make offers. You have to figure out and get the biofeedback and tweak and adjust your plans. But you get clear on the strategy first. Because these are all choices. And I think about what do I do in my business day in, day in, day out. I am here to help you stand for a client growth through engine. I'm going to get you clear on who are you, what do you serve, how do you want to show up in the world, what makes you the must hire so that what happens, you can make predictable decisions that move you towards your strategy. 
So you have confidence your strategy is going to win in the marketplace, not just once, not just accidentally, not once every three years, but win consistently. And the fourth question you need to be asking is what are the capabilities we need today and in the near future to win in this marketplace? And chances are that's going to evolve because the marketplace is evolving. You as a business owner are evolving, but you need to constantly be thinking about capacity gaps and building and keeping an eye out for where's your next hire? Where's the biggest bottlenecks? How do we deliver against our promise to a very high standard? The standard you set by choosing the answers to the first three questions. The goal of strategy is to determine how will we compete to win? You're going to compete in an uncertain dynamic. Strategy by its very nature is loose in its day-to-day -day feel because you're hoping to attract the buyer. There's no certainty there. You're hoping to put a product or service into the marketplace that somebody will pay for at a profitable rate. You are hoping that that product, that client, and the profit, that there's enough of them to support the business model of a team. What it requires is you for you to be a leader in the uncertainty and still make the decisions. Does the actions we're taking, does the plan we want to execute move us towards the vision or not? And that means making some uncertain decisions but making them nonetheless so that you can get the feedback loop and you know you have no direct control. But here's the kicker. If you can run your theories, if you can test your market, if you can answer those four questions to recap, what playing field do you want to play on? How do you want to play there? What makes you the must hire in that field? And what are the capabilities we need to win? You will what? Win. Not just once. You can win. And once you win once, you can distill it, break it down and figure out what were the inputs that supported that win so that you can win and choose to win in more ways. Winning in more ways is acceleration. It is scale. It is expansion. And anytime there's expansion, you get to manage the capacity. It's very simple. Strategy is not negotiable, in my opinion. And so many businesses have gone to the execution of the plan without really having the roadmap. This roadmap is 50,000 feet, but it is the guiding principle that leads everything. The guiding principle should be on a one-page document, not 35 pages of a business plan. The questions you're asking are simple. Who are we? What do we stand for? What are our values? And why would people pay us money? And it will evolve based on your leadership. It will evolve based on the inputs. It will evolve when you have a mechanism in place to run feedback. Doing this shifts you from simply participating in the field of business to being a business that dominates because you stand for the result, which is service-based in nature. I am giving you a call to arms. Don't skip your strategy piece. It's the reason you're spinning. It's the reason you don't have certainty in your decision making. And you think I'll get to it when I do the annual plan. Well, I'm saying yes, budget. Yes, allocate. Yes, get integrated leaders onto the same page but somebody must make the choice. And if you're a small business owner, that's you, my friend. You are responsible for the strategy. And that means you need thinking partners. The biggest thing we do at my business is we're strategic advisors. We're helping people build the strategy. We're helping check for congruency. And we can be brought in at any number of places. I have people that come into us and say, can you audit our business? Because truthfully, I'm not sure if we even have a strategy. 
Or I have a strategy, but I have a really niggling suspicion that the strategy is in the boardroom and not in real life. And I come in and I audit the first impression for them. I said, this is what your strategy looks like on the outside. And often it's a bit horrifying because it is not in congruency. It is in the boardroom and not in real life. I get brought in to help somebody go, this is my business. It's at this stage and that is some level of health, but it's not where I want it to stay. I want to grow it, expand it. I want to redefine it. I want to simplify it. I need to adjust the capacity because what we had got to get to here isn't going to get us to there. Strategy touches every point because strategy fuels decision making. And that's why when I look at my business, I stand for a client growth engine, regardless of whether you come in as a one-to-one -one client or you come in as a group. Those are about the support and the duration and the speed at which you travel, but the result is the same. That's the outcome. But what are we really doing? Well, as a strategic thinking partner for my clients, we help them build their roadmap get really clear on making decisions to support it and knowing that they can iterate the decisions and they have the leadership to manage different offers, different clients, different economics. And they do that because they have faith that they will be there six months, 12 months, 18 months, 24 months. It's not complicated. It is not effortless, but strategy, it's a perfect plan every single day because strategy is the thing you need and you need to slow down and dedicate time. If you want to accelerate anything, you got to know where you're going. You got to know why it matters. You got to know what it takes to get there. And you've got to know why winning even is non-negotiable for you. Strategy is the difference between participating and winning. And if you want to be in business, I want you to win. And winning isn't one dimensional. Winning is being the catalyst, seeing the profitability, employing and paying your people well. It's getting the results for your clients. It's giving back to your communities. It's living the light that you know you were called to serve. So I want you to embrace strategy, get out of the planning cycle and win. You need some help? Come connect to me on christinecampbellrappin.com. It's like what we do. And we'll be happy to help fire up your engine and make it happen. We'll see you on the next episode. That's a wrap on another amazing episode of Amplify Your Marketing Message with me, your host, Christine Campbell Rappin. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss another great episode. And be sure to visit christinecampbellrappin.com slash podcast to get a free resource on how to master your marketing message. We'll see you all on our next episode.